Hello fellow collectors and welcome to Long's Toys. Today we are taking a look at Studio Series number 65, Voyager Class Blitzwing from the Transformers Bumblebee movie. Uh, he's not in the movie very long, but he does play a pretty significant role uh, early on in the movie. So pretty cool, very happy he got a uh, Studio Series figure. I know a lot of people thought this was going to be Starscream when the trailers first uh, came out due to, you know, his design and his color scheme. Doesn't really scream Blitzwing, I have to be honest. I mean... If you're familiar with G1 Blitzwing, he was kind of tan and purple, and uh, this guy could not be further from that color scheme. I mean, I completely understand why. You know, they're going for a more realistic color scheme, uh, given the tone of the movie, so I get it. But I guess they're just reusing the name. But either way, cool, cool character in the movie. Happy to get a figure for him in the studio series. Still don't understand why they've just, it's always an Autobot symbol, unless it's a Constructicon then they get their own symbol, but Decepticons, no love. It's always the Autobot symbol. I never get that. Um, not really too much going on the top or bottom. Coming around to the back, you can see the robot mode, the jet mode. Um, yeah, pretty standard packaging here for the Studio Series. So I'm going to go ahead and get Blitzwing out of the box, and then we'll take a closer look. So here is Blitzwing with the little diorama piece that he comes with. I think it's pretty cool. If you're familiar with the movie, this is the scene that he appears in. You have the U.S. soldiers on the ground near the cliff face where he fights bumblebees. So, pretty cool. I think they're neat. Uh, as per usual, I don't really have room to display these. But if you do, I think they're very nice. And I kind of appreciate that they include one of these with all the Studio Series figures. And I'm really looking forward to the ones that they include with the Studio Series 86 figures. Because those look amazing. Uh, but in any case, I appreciate that they do this. And uh, he looks pretty cool. You can pose him in there. I think it works. So here is Blitzwing out of the packaging, and I gotta say, he looks good. I've always liked this design. Uh, back when we thought this was Starscream, I thought this really would have worked for kind of a reboot slash new movie era Starscream. I think the design's actually pretty cool. Um, a lot of the joints on mine are very tight. I'm assuming that they'll loosen over time, and I guess it's a better problem to have than having joints that are too loose. Um, but definitely very tight, kind of hard to move some of them. But you do have a bit of a kind of giant flat wing piece on the back, but I don't really mind it. I mean, it's flat, doesn't really get in the way, looks kind of neat with the wings like that, so I don't mind it. Uh, trying to get up close so we can take a look at the face sculpt. Pretty cool, I like the red eyes. He's got kind of a, I guess, like flight mask going on there, kind of molded into his head, which looks pretty neat. Uh, heads on a ball joint so that can go uh, side to side up and down nice movement there uh, for the shoulders you have a swivel now here's the one problem with the mold uh, this piece here if I go ahead you see that this whole giant back piece I just pointed out has these two pegs and they peg in right here and here and they do peg in very snugly uh, but this piece here is meant to move for the transformation we'll get there a little bit later this does not lock in place. Like, it's got some decent friction the way it kind of clips over the cockpit area there. And then once you go ahead and peg this in, and it really does peg in pretty snugly, it's not going to move for the most part, especially if he's just standing there. Um, but because the shoulder joints are so tight, sometimes it tries to move it up and down a little bit. It's not a huge problem. It's just, like, the only issue I really have with the figure. Uh, so I feel like over time these will loosen and you probably won't have that problem, but you do have a swivel there, out to the side, uh, hinge with the shoulder as well, bicep swivel, you have a double jointed elbow there, uh, you do have a wrist movement, but it's because uh, it broke, no I'm just kidding, it's meant to unpeg, <laughs> uh, we'll get more on that in a second, um, this one actually has a hinge for the fingers, which I think is kind of interesting. Um, you have these little skirts down here. You do have a little bit of movement in the waist, uh, but because of this giant piece on the front, it kind of hinders it. So you do have a, a swivel there in the uh, waist, but it doesn't really give you much. You can kick out to the side. You can kick to the front. Um, you can kick to the back. Just got to watch that skirt because it can get in the way. You have a thigh swivel there. You have pretty much 90 degree there in the knee and then you do have an ankle tilt so he looks great i really like him quite a bit i think they did a nice job let me move the camera here like i said it's a, it's a clean design he doesn't really have a ton of kibble he's got a little bit of these back fins and then he's got this big wing piece on the back but like i said it's flat and i think it looks cool so i don't really mind it being back there so yeah overall i like him quite a bit 
He does have a number of accessories. Um, we'll go ahead and peg these on. These are kind of like these little missile pods, I guess. Um, it's up to you. You can leave them on in the robot mode. Um, you can take them off. It's up to you. I kind of like the look of them better without, but that's just me personally. Uh, you also have these little fins here. Again, you have a little bit of preference how you if you like them looking straight up. If you want them down to the side, it doesn't really matter. I kind of like the look of them straight up just because they blend into the wings a little bit more. Um, now, I mean, it would hinder when you're trying to do that, but you can see that they bend, so it's not that big a deal. I'm probably just going to leave them down, actually. I like them better up, but just for ease of transformation and moving them around, I think it's easier just to leave them down. Uh, the next accessory is this large arm cannon, which is pretty cool. It's going to fit into his hand right here, and then this part is going to peg into his forearm. So this will drop in, and then that will peg in. And so that way it looks like... And see, you can see how I just... I tried to move this... Um, so that popped out. It doesn't happen often, but it absolutely can happen. Just got to move this back in. Peg that. And again, it's just because this shoulder joint is so tight. This one's even tighter than the other one. I mean, it's really tight. So if I just hold that and move it. Uh, but anyway, now it looks like the gun is all part of his wrist. I like that. I think that's pretty cool. The reason that the hand pops out... And it's meant to just uh, pop right out of there. No big deal. You have the second kind of hand with the spike, which is what he uses to remove Bumblebee's voice box. Spoilers if you haven't seen Bumblebee yet. So you can just peg that one in instead, which is kind of neat. So I think that's cool. Nice little accessory there. Very easy to swap in and out. No problem whatsoever. And then if you don't want to use it, you can actually peg it here on the back. So you have a little bit of storage right there for it. Kind of looks a little weird just hanging off of there, but it does store on there. So if you're displaying this on a shelf and you want somewhere to put it without losing it, you won't see it from the front. So I think it works out well. And I really do like the arm cannon. I think that looks pretty cool. It's a little difficult to actually get off. There we go. All right, I'm going to hold this while I put this back down because it's a very tight joint. But yeah, overall, I really like the look of him quite a bit. I think he looks good. It's a good design, good amount of articulation. Lovely accessories. I think the paint's very sharp. Head sculpt's good. Uh, but let's go ahead. We'll get into the transformation now. It's a little unusual, but I think it's really neat. All right, so first step, go ahead and just push those wings all the way down. Super simple. Uh, coming down here to the legs, you're going to spin them around 180 at the thigh swivel, like so. You're going to rotate in the heels, or I guess technically these are the front of the feet. Yeah, they're the front. So fold them in underneath like so. You're going to uh, flip this around because then this is going to unhook and swivel all the way around. You can see there is a super tiny little tab right there and that is going to tab in right there. So this is going to come up and just loosely tab. It's not like a super tight tab or anything. It's more just for guidance to make sure you have it in the right spot. There we go. So there we go. Now we're going to tab these two together down here. So let me zoom out. So here are the back of the legs. Now you're going to uh, spin, well, actually just turn them around 180 degrees. Oh, you know what I forgot to do? I always do this. Forget to spin these around. <laughs> you have to open this up and spin those around and then just bring these up. Now, peg that together. You're going to unpeg this, like so, from the back. This is going to drop around. This section is going to flip around 180 degrees. And then this just comes down here and just make sure you push these together through that space. And this just kind of drops down. It doesn't really peg into place anywhere specifically. It just kind of stays there by friction of other pieces. Um, we'll have some things peg other things in later on, but for now, that just kind of stays there like that. Uh, you're going to put the arms all the way out to the sides like so. You're going to lift this section up, and then this is actually going to um, open the cockpit, spin the head down, and close that back up. 
then this is going to come all the way down. Now before you get it all the way down, you're going to take the arms, you're going to uh, spin the hands like so, so that the top of the hand is facing up. This piece is going to spin around behind the hand like so. Repeat that process over here on this side. So spin the hand up. Make sure that this one is the hand is closed all the way because you don't want that finger to get stuck around. Make sure these are up like so. And then you're going to bring this down. Now there are two spots right here and here. And they are going to tab in down here and here. So you're going to bring this down. And sometimes I find it's a little bit easier um, just to kind of bring this like this and then kind of slide it in. There you go. So you're going to push that in. And then these pieces you can see kind of fill in these gaps. And it's a little weird to get everything to line up, but it will do it. So really get that all pushed in as tight as you can. And then you can see we're pretty much done. All right, so at this point, we're going to flip down the nose cone and that will flip like this. And then we're going to just spin this whole part of the fuselage. I can never remember which way you do it. There we go, 180 degrees and there you go. Now at this point, we do have those accessories. We can come in here, uh, flip these little wing pieces up again and these are gonna peg in right there. So you just peg this in like so, and then you can just kind of tuck that against. So bring this up, peg this in like so, and then you can tuck that against. Uh, this is actually going to fit underneath here. You can see that there is a uh, rectangular peg hole underneath right there. That's gonna peg in right here. So you're gonna take this and that's going to peg in. Now it's not at a straight angle. You can see that the gun has to hang a little bit lower, so peg that in there. And then you can take this piece and just kind of put it under one of the wings back here, just for storage. And then you can bring down the landing gear, and there you go. You have the jet mode. I think it looks very cool. This still doesn't, and I've transformed this a couple times, usually one of the two doesn't 100% snap all the way in. It's not a huge problem, it's just, you know, you can see the, the panel lines and whatnot. But overall, I really like it. I'm surprised how much it stays together, given that I don't feel like a ton of things peg in. I mean, this down here is kind of what holds the whole vehicle mode together, those two pegs on the side down here. Um, because otherwise this is really just on there, the, the friction of fitting over top of these two skirt pieces. Um, so yeah, it's interesting. It's interesting. It's a really cool transformation in my opinion, uh, but it works well. And I think the jet mode you're left with looks really, really good. So I'm happy with it. I think the, uh, storage for all the accessories is fantastic. Can you actually still open the cockpit? Yeah, even though you can't really put anything in there because the robot head's in there, you can still open the cockpit, so that's kind of cool. But yeah, overall, really like this vehicle mode quite a bit. So I really love Blitzwing, even more so than I thought I was going to. Um, I love the design. I think the robot mode really works. The color scheme's great. Um, the accessory count is great. Uh, articulation's good. The only thing that you can even possibly complain about this figure is the fact that this part of the chest doesn't like 100% peg into the cockpit area. But if you can get the, the peg on the back snug enough, it's not usually a problem. The only time I even run into a problem is when I'm trying to move the shoulders, and that's only because the joints on the shoulders are so tight. But I think over time they're going to loosen up and it's not going to be much of a problem. So yeah, I really don't have too much to complain about this guy. I really, really like this figure quite a bit. Robot mode's great. Vehicle mode. I love the accessories. I love this uh, gun here that pegs in. I love when they do this with the movie uh, figures where they make the gun kind of cover the hand and kind of flow perfectly from the forearm so that it looks like, you know, the gun is built into the arm because his arm transformed into the gun. I think that's really, really cool. I love that. So very happy with those. I even think this little accessory over here of having the arm uh, unpeg and have this other one easily peg in is a great accessory as well. Very simple, very easy to utilize, no problems whatsoever there. So 
I definitely recommend picking this up. I found mine on Amazon. I still haven't really seen him in stores at all, but I would imagine it'd probably be showing up in stores soon. Um, you could check Hasbro Pulse. You could check Target, places like that. He should be around. I don't think it should be too difficult to find this guy pretty soon. Uh, but yeah, I love him. Definitely recommend picking him up. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Please like, share, and subscribe. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. And as always, thanks so much for watching.